Why do two magnets stick together? What is this invisible aura that enables a magnet to attract something from a distance? The mathematicians call the magical substance that surrounds a magnet a field, formally defined as the presence of a quantity at every point in space. Quantum and classical mechanics insinuate that the mysterious halo that surrounds a magnet consists of discrete particles. Indeed, as a particle theory, quantum mechanics absolutely demands it. However, when you look up how a magnet works, you see no sign of the particles quantum mechanics predicts. The experts explain that a magnet is comprised of microscopic regions known as magnetic domains. When aligned, the domains generate lines of force that sweep around the magnet, but not a single professor at any university in the world can tell you how these lines of force are related to quantum particles or how they physically produce attraction. How does the north pole of one magnet physically attract the south pole of another? What is physically going on at these two ends? One expert answers, the field lines leave the north pole of one magnet and naturally enter the south pole of another. This is not an explanation. This is a description. It does not tell you what is physically going on at the north pole of a magnet to attract the south pole of another. If there is one force that quantum mechanics will never be able to explain rationally with discrete particles, it is the force of pull. How does a gluon pull on a quark? The rope hypothesis, on the other hand, enables us to explain attraction rationally. By rationally, I mean that you don't need to stretch your imagination. We can make a movie and you can visualize exactly how one magnet attracts another one. Thread theory proposes that two atoms are permanently interconnected by a two-strand electromagnetic rope. Light is a torsion propagating in two directions along the rope. When the atoms spin, one of the threads swings around the atoms. The mysterious lines of force that sweep around a magnet, in which the mathematicians call a field, are countless threads that originate in the electromagnetic rope. A magnet is not divided into north and south poles, or in negative and positive, as the mathematicians lead you to believe. In physics, there is no such thing as north and south poles or positive and negative. In physics, there is only clockwise and counterclockwise. A magnet is divided into top and bottom. If the domains in the upper half of a magnet swing the threads clockwise, the bottom half swing the threads counterclockwise. Here we see a cross-section of the lines of force swinging around a row of electron balloons which are bound together by their electric threads. Electric current consists of the in-situ spinning of the electron serpentine. Notice that the effect we know as electricity runs perpendicular to the direction in which the magnetic threads swing. If two wires have current flowing into your eyes, the magnetic threads in both wires swing counterclockwise. Conversely, if we turn one of the wires around, the magnetic threads clash against each other and push the cables apart. These are the patterns formed by iron filings sprinkled over two wires carrying current in the same direction. The wires are attracted towards each other. The first pattern resembles what we would see if the iron filings were swung in a circle around the wire. The second one is a figure eight pattern. It is as if the iron filing here attempted to circle the wire on the left, but before it can do so completely, it is picked up by the second wire and swung around itself. Then, the iron filing is again picked up by the wire on the left and never manages to complete an orbit around one wire. The third pattern shows the iron filing circling both wires in an elliptical path. Iron filings sprinkled around two wires carrying current in opposite directions show a pattern resembling two rollers of an old washing machine squeezing water out of a shirt. These wires repel each other. It is as if an iron filing were bound by a string and was swept around each wire. When the particles are between the atoms, their paths are squeezed through a tighter opening. Of course, the iron filings do not orbit the wires. What does swing around are the countless threads originating in the wires that sweep through the filings like your hand brushing down beads of an abacus. It is this activity which compels the magnetic domains of the iron filings to align. The applied magnetic field passes right through the iron undiminished. 
It then induces a secondary magnetic field in the iron. A magnetic field is made up of lines of magnetic flux. If these lines of flux cut any metal object, a conductor, then a current is induced in that piece of metal. Let's take a live wire and fold it to form a U. Notice that the threads on the top and bottom part of the wire swing in opposite directions. If we continue to coil the wire, we have a solenoid. The magnetic threads at the top swing clockwise and those at the bottom swing counterclockwise. The aggregate of threads generates a force through the center of the coil. If we superimpose a magnet on our solenoid, we verify that the direction of the electron serpentine, the field and the force are consistent with observation. The domains of a magnet are regions where the electron serpentines spin in the same direction. So what does all of this have to do with attraction? How does a magnet physically attract and repel another one? Let's first illustrate the mechanism in simple terms to understand the principle. There are two twins. Axel and Rod, who are skipping their respective ropes a little too close to each other. They are both facing in the same direction and swinging their respective ropes counterclockwise from your perspective. Their ropes interfere with each other. While Axel's rope comes down, Rod's rope goes up. Axel's rope pulls on Rod's rope and vice versa. Notice that the ropes scan the traction pattern we saw between two wires running current in the same direction. Now Axel turns around and swings his rope counter to rods. This time the ropes push each other away. We verify that the ropes describe the two rollers of a washing machine pattern we saw during repulsion. Let's extrapolate this mechanism to two magnets. The north pole of one magnet attracts the south pole of another because top threads spin clockwise while the bottom threads spin counterclockwise. The more threads that intervene in the process, the stronger the repulsion or the attraction. This explains why magnetic strength is a function of the distance between two magnets. If we turn one of the magnets in the top-bottom direction, we verify that nothing changes at the traditional north and south poles. The electron serpentines at the top, which run parallel to your line of sight, continue to swing the threads clockwise and the bottom ones counterclockwise. However, if we rotate one of the magnets in the traditional north-south direction, the direction of the top and bottom threads is reversed. The top threads of the magnet now spin counterclockwise, whereas the bottom threads spin clockwise. Consistent with experience, we verify the repulsion pattern developed between the two north poles that now face each other. After 80 years of quantum mechanics, the members of this religion cannot tell you what a field is, how the lines of force are related to particles, or how they produce attraction. They never will. There is absolutely no rational way to explain the force of pull with discrete particles. On the other hand, threads justify lines of force and explain attraction and repulsion. A magnetic field does not consist of particles as quantum mechanics would have you believe. The particle hypothesis should once and for all be abandoned. There are no discrete particles in the universe.